Right, so judge, judging by your arrival, Steve ran over five minutes in his, uh, in his keynote, and well, I think we should let him. Um, from from f smart felling devices to uh, people who are hurting seals, but then in another way. Uh, I'd like to give the word to Tom, who's here to present uh, on his investig his uh, research together with his uh, fellow students who are on the slide deck here on third-party security systems. Thank you. Uh, hi, so I'm Tom, and uh, today's, well, this presentation will be about clubbing seals. Uh, no need to worry, we won't harm actual animals, uh, but I can't say the same about uh, security seals. Uh, so first a bit about me. So I'm Tom, uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Leuven, uh, which is located in Belgium. Uh, in my PhD, I mainly focus on web security, uh, mainly in a large scale, and I also look at uh, privacy threats on the web. I tend to call myself a security researcher as well. Uh, for instance, a bit more than a year ago, I was here talking about a vulnerability that I discovered in WordPress. Uh, and yeah, you can also find me on Twitter. Uh, so let's start. Well, let's meet Alice. So Alice is your average web user, but uh, recently Alice has heard about all these awful security attacks, like heart bleeds, shell shock, uh, you name it. So Alice has become a bit more security conscious. Now, when Alice wants to buy a new dress, uh, she goes to a web shop because well, she's uh, of the 21st uh, century. Uh, but, well, when she selected the address of her liking, uh, she will need to enter her credentials. Uh, this could be uh, credit card credentials, the place where she lives, uh, her email, password, uh, several kinds of uh, features that she has to answer, uh, enter. But of course, she doesn't know whether she should trust the web shop with her credentials. So this is where the security seal co providers come into play. So these seal providers uh, employ a vulnerability <laughs> scanner, uh, which will scan for vulnerabilities in the web shop and report back uh, the findings to the security seal provider. And when the web shop is found to be without uh, vulnerabilities, they inc can include a security <coughs> seal which is basically an image hosted by the security seal provider. And the image uh, is also clickable uh, and say, says that the security of the website is OK. So now when Alice goes to the web shop and wonders whether the security is OK, she can actually look at the image there and notice that the, the security of that website has been uh, checked and she can uh, without any troubles, uh, enter her credentials there. So, for further, uh, no, well, to further investigate, she can even click on the image, uh, which will refer to the website of the trusted seal provider, a uh, company name which she probably knows, uh, which will state that, uh, which will state in a bit more detail, uh, which vulnerabilities were checked for, and that the uh, uh, web shop uh, managed to pass all the vulnerability scans. So, uh, in this talk, I will first go over the different entities in this ecosystem. So, the security seal providers and their customers. Uh, next, I will uh, look at the claims of these security seal providers. So, whether websites containing a security seal are actually more or less secure. Uh, and in the last part of this presentation, I will look at uh, some attacks that we discovered in our research, uh, which actually uh, makes websites with a con uh, containing a security seal uh, vulnerable to new types of attack vectors. But first, let's look at the security seal providers which we evaluated. So here you can see some uh, security seals. 
Uh, you probably have seen this on some websites before. Uh, so these are uh, seals of well-known companies uh, such as McAfee, Norton, Qualys, uh, and some others. And uh, here you can see two quotes from uh, two of these companies. So these companies say that they scan for vulnerabilities in dynamic web applications. So they check for things as SQL injection and they verify these vulnerabilities are not present uh, in order that the website is able to safeguard consumer data. Uh, yeah, another one is saying that the badge, so the security seal, will only appear when the website has passed an intensive security scan. And these scans uh, are performed in a way uh, much like an attacker would. So uh, if they are unable to find a vulnerability, then an attacker wouldn't find it either. So in our study, we evaluated then different seal providers. Uh, these ranged from uh, large security companies where the security seal was just one of their many products uh, to startups that just focus on providing these security seals. The cost of such a security seal uh, also vary, varies a lot. So it ranges from $84 a year to uh, over $2,000 a year. And what they all have in common is that they all offer a vulnerability scan, uh, which is obvious because otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell anything about the security of a website. Uh, but some of them offer some additional services. So half of them, uh, so five SEAL providers, also offer a malware scan. Uh, where they basically crawl through your website, uh, look for uh, malware files, uh, and if they do find it, they report it to you so you can remove it. Uh, some other uh, additional services are offered by a uh, few uh, SEAL providers. Uh, for instance, uh, some of them allow you to give them FTP access. Uh, that allows them to browse through all the files on your server side and check for uh, malware there. And an other service that's provided is that you can give them uh, credentials to a login form. Uh, so that's needed when they want to uh, evaluate the security of, uh, uh, when they want to evaluate the security of the authenticate, authenticated parts of uh, the website. But it should be noted uh, that both, these, uh, both of these features are optional. So you can obtain a security uh, seal without providing these uh, additional uh, services. And then there are some other differences uh, between the different seal providers. So some of them, uh, well, uh, so when a vulnerability is found, uh, of course, the, the security seal shouldn't still show. Otherwise, uh, the seal provider is just lying, saying that um, this, uh, this vulnerable site is not vulnerable. So what they do is they make the security seal invisible. Uh, and they do that by making it, making it into a one by one pixel image or uh, making it a transparent PNG. And some of them offer a certain grace period where you have time to uh, fix the vulnerability before the seal disappears. And this ranges up to uh, seven days. And now let's look at uh, the customers of these seal providers. Uh, so we looked for these security seal customers by crawling uh, the topmost 1 million uh, popular websites, uh, according to Alexa. There we looked for uh, the presence of these security seal images. So all these images are hosted by the seal providers. So it's very easy to detect uh, if a certain website is using a certain uh, security seal. We also looked for uh, links as well. Uh, and as an additional way to find uh, seal customers, because we might miss something by crawling, 
uh, is to look for uh, results by using Google snippets. So for instance, using this snippet, uh, it's possible to enumerate all the, or many of the customers of uh, Scan Verify. So in total, we discovered uh, more than 8,000 websites containing such a security seal. Uh, the majority of them come from the, uh, one, the one million most popular websites, uh, which isn't very surprising because uh, well, these security seals come with a certain cost. And if your, websites, uh, if your website doesn't get many visits, you don't benefit a lot from having uh, these security seals present. And the most popular category among these uh, security seal customers uh, was found to be e-commerce, uh, which is also not very surprising because uh, these are the type of websites that try to convey to their users that they are secure. Uh, and therefore, uh, that may lead to an increase of uh, sales. Uh, so now, uh, in the second part, we will do this uh, security evaluation of the uh, SEAL providers. So we try to answer the question whether Alice should trust these SEAL providers. Uh, maybe uh, I'll ask you what you think. So who thinks that Alice should trust these SEAL providers? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was as expected. Uh, but of course, you don't really know it because you haven't performed any experiments. So you're just guessing that uh, these are, uh, well, that others shouldn't really trust them. Uh, but we did do the experiments. So we did uh, three different types of experiments. So first, we compared the presence of uh, security indicators of sealed websites to non-sealed websites. And a second uh, experiment, we did a manual penetration test on uh, websites that contained a security seal and were willing to cooperate. And uh, third, uh, we set up a vulnerable web shop and tried to acquire as many seals as possible. <laughs> <coughs> so, in our first experiment, we made the as assumption that uh, sealed websites are interested in their security. And one way of augmenting the security of your website is by using uh, security mechanisms, uh, such as adding CSRF tokens on, in your forms and having all these security headers present. So we wanted to compare the presence of these security mechanisms in sealed websites to non-sealed websites, uh, actually equivalent non-sealed websites. And with equivalent, I mean uh, uh, websites of the same category. So an e-commerce website should be compared to another e-commerce website, and they should be of similar Alexa ranking, so either 10 ranks above or 10 ranks below. So as I said, we compared the presence of several security indicators. Uh, such as uh, HTTP strict transport security, uh, secure and HTTP only attributes on cookies, content security policy, extreme options, and several others. And this is what we found. So uh, here you can see the security mechanism, uh, the percentage of uh, its presence in sites with a security seal and sites without a security seal. Uh, and then we looked at uh, the, for which security mechanisms there is a significant difference in its presence. And we found that only three of the mechanisms had a significant difference in its presence. And uh, interestingly, it was twice in the favor of sites without a security seal. Uh, now, we're, we're not claiming that uh, sites without a security seal are therefore uh, significantly more secure, but at least this indicates that sites with a security seal are not trying to do their best effort in protecting their website, or at least 
uh, not more than sites without a security seal. Okay, so we know that uh, well, websites with a, a security seal don't significantly use uh, these security mechanisms more than sites without a security seal. Uh, but still, you can have a, a not vulnerable websites uh, without these uh, security mechanisms. So that's why we did this ex uh, next experiment where we made the assumption that if a security scan uh, was performed uh, by the SEAL provider and uh, they didn't find any vulnerabilities, we wouldn't be able to discover uh, easily discoverable vulnerabilities. So in order to test this claim, uh, we tried to contact uh, 1,000 sealed websites. Uh, unfortunately, only nine of them uh, agreed to let us do a free penetration test. We were even uh, willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but still only nine of them agreed, which, which already says uh, something. Um, and also a funny side note here. Uh, so in the process of contacting these uh, sealed websites, we had this, uh, well, uh, this placeholder text that we sent to everyone. Uh, but yeah, so this text contained a contraption. So instead of do not, it said don't. Uh, and the don't is with a single quote. So when we entered uh, this text on a certain website, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess you know what happened. Uh, we did try to notify the administrator of the website that it contained a very easily uh, SQL injection, but unfortunately we didn't get any replies. Okay, so uh, anyways, for the nine of the nine seal, uh, sealed websites that ag did agree to let us do a penetration test. Uh, we looked for several common vulnerabilities, uh, such as SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, having no CSRF token uh, during eight hours. So we limited ourselves to eight hours uh, to mimic uh, the, well, the, the amount a mod modestly interested attacker would uh, be willing to spend on checking the vulnerabilities in this website. So we found that uh, the majority of these websites were vulnerable. So seven out of the nine websites were vulnerable. And of these seven, six were uh, vulnerable to very easily discoverable vulnerabilities, uh, such as a cross-site scripting where just a get parameter was reflected without any proper encoding. Uh, uh, yeah, this textbook SQL injection, uh, yeah, uh, which is similar to the one with the contact form. Uh, so, well, this is pretty bad. Uh, I, and I should also, also mention that uh, the, well, we try to aim for uh, an, as large as possible distribution of the uh, security <coughs> seal providers. So I think uh, for these nine websites, we evaluated uh, nine, uh, sorry, uh, six or seven different seal providers. Okay. Then uh, in a third experiment, we set up a vulnerable web shop in order to evaluate the accuracy of these of the security tools that are used by the seal providers. Uh, so this is quite important because if the accuracy is bad, then uh, well, an attacker would be able to find uh, vulnerabilities that weren't found by the seal providers. So uh, we wanted to reflect a realistic website. So we sh set up an uh, e-commerce website uh, based on an open source e-commerce system named PrestaShop. Uh, we explicitly chose for an outdated uh, version, which contained uh, cross-site scripting vulnerability. 
And to this application, we added 12 different vulnerabilities, uh, ranging from very basic things, such as cross-site scripting, SQL injection, having sensitive files present, uh, to a bit more advanced things, such as uh, issues with OAuth. Uh, and the results were, well, not that very surprising, but uh, definitely not good. Uh, so, as you can see, two of the SEAL providers didn't manage to find any vulnerability in our web website, even though we included 12, some of which were very easily discoverable. Uh, but by looking at our server logs, we, it wasn't that surprising, uh, because actually uh, one of the SEAL providers here just did a port scan on our, on, uh, on our host, uh, yeah, which is definitely not enough to, uh, to prove the security of a certain website. The other one did a very basic NASA scan, uh, just checking for very uh, basic things, uh, but of course that wasn't uh, sufficient either. But for the other SEAL providers, well, they didn't manage to find half of uh, the vulnerabilities that we put there. But that's not that good either. But of course, you could argue that we made it very hard for them to find these uh, vulnerabilities. So that's why uh, we used some uh, off-the-shelf tools uh, to, find to find the vulnerabilities that we put there. So we just used the very basic settings. Uh, and we ran a burp, uh, HP Web Inspect, and uh, a kinetic scan, and uh, they managed to find at least as much vulnerabilities as the best performing SEAL provider. Uh, and one of them even outperformed them. Uh, so this means that if an attacker would just use one of these off-the-shelf tools, he would be able to discover vulnerabilities that were missed by uh, the SEAL providers. So. In, yeah. I was a question. Um, were you logging their activities? Yes. Maybe that the SEAL providers immediately stopped their scanning as soon as they found <coughs> the first vulnerabilities and then say, okay, we don't have to go any. Uh, 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 go yeah. Uh, well, we looked at, well, we, we kept all the logs and yeah. we looked at what their behavior was and they just kept on scanning until they did the complete scan and then reported all the vulnerabilities. Yeah. That's three. Yeah. That's uh, three. And the others. Yeah. And did you also perform some intrusive testing on uh, websites that didn't have seen? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, okay. Let's move on to the next part. Um, so, you could say, well, these uh, seals, well, they didn't, they don't really uh, protect uh, you, uh, or they don't find every vulnerability that's there. But of course, it doesn't harm you, right? Well, actually, uh, that's not entirely true. So we uh, discovered that by having such a security seal on your website you're actually exposing yourself to new types of attack factors. Uh, I will just discuss uh, three of them, but if you're interested in, the, uh, in all of them, you should just look at the paper that we wrote about this. So, uh, we, uh, f we discovered that it was possible for attackers to use uh, these security seals as an oracle in order to find uh, vulnerable websites. Uh, then in a second attack, we found that it's possible for the attacker to uniquely identify which vulnerability was discovered in this uh, vulnerable website. And then the uh, last attack shows that having such a security seal on your website may improve on phishing campaigns against your website. So, in the first attack, uh, the attacker wants to find uh, the vulnerable websites. 
this is interesting for a attacker because well, he could just simply uh, scan the whole internet for vulnerable websites. But if he already knows that a certain website is vulnerable, then he might put a bit more effort into scanning that certain website. So what the attacker here does is he collects a list of uh, websites containing a security seal, uh, which isn't that very hard to do. Uh, and next he checks for the visibility of these uh, security seals. So on the first day, he sees that all uh, security seals are visible. Then on the second day, he does the same scan and now notices that, so for website three, the security seal now has disappeared. Uh, so this could mean two things. So either the contract between website three and the seal provider has ended, or website three is actually vulnerable. So this could give the attacker a trigger to start a vulnerability scan against website three. And basically the attacker could keep on doing this, uh, still the same result on day three. But on day four he notices that uh, the seal of website three uh, has returned. Uh, Um, I think most of them uh, remove it even when medium ones are found. <coughs> uh, so here on day four, the seal has returned. So this means that uh, website three was very likely to be vulnerable on day two and day three, maybe even on day one, depending on the grace periods offered by the seal provider. So basically, the attacker could keep on scanning uh, the visibility of these security seals, which is not a very hard job to do. Uh, we also did it ourselves uh, and also managed to discover many vulnerable websites. Uh, so there's a vulnerability probably in website four and then website five and so on. Okay. Now the attacker knows that a certain website is vulnerable, but he still needs to uh, find the exact vulnerability. Uh, so in order to do so, he can uh, set up a proxy. I have a question. Did he, or did you, oh, sorry. Did you click on the shields to see what they said before uh, continuing to? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, In the previous slides. Because uh, in the day one, can you go back? In day one, that did you click on each one of them to understand? Uh, to understand my question? Yeah, to yeah, understand yeah. The, the situation of the websites? Yeah. Uh, so we also visited the website uh, when clicking on the seal, and uh, well, it basically sets more or less the same as the visibility of the seal. So here it says still said that the uh, that website three was without vulnerabilities, and here it said something uh, that's yeah the website three was without vulnerabilities on day one. Uh, so they don't say that uh, website three is actually vulnerable. But they say yeah we last checked uh, website three to be without vulnerabilities on day one. Okay. Uh, Okay, so he set up uh, this proxy and then instructs the security seal provider uh, to scan his proxy. Uh, so it would be best for him to use the same security seal provider as his target. Uh, but of course, that's not required. And many of these uh, security seal providers offer this uh, free trial. So it's... Uh, <laughs> Not that difficult. Uh, so the security seal provider launches this vulnerability scanner, uh, which is instructed to scan the proxy. But the proxy will just forward all requests to the target, uh, get responses back, uh, <laughs> and forward them to the vulnerability scanner. 
And this uh, process goes on until the scan is complete. Uh, the vulnerability scanner reports it back to the seal provider, uh, which will report it back to the attacker. And all that's left for the attacker to do is exploit vulnerabilities <laughs> and earn some money. Okay. So the last attack that I'll cover today is an attack uh, where uh, the attacker tries to make a phishing campaign against a certain sealed website. Of course, it would be easy for him to just copy all the HTML codes, including the seal image. Uh, but of course, the seal providers aren't that dumb. Uh, so they check uh, the referrer header. Uh, and when the domain in the referrer header uh, doesn't match the domain of the sealed websites, they don't show the image. Uh, yeah, that prevents them uh, from, uh, well, from this very basic attack. But of course, uh, it's possible to hide the referrer header. And when the referrer header isn't present, uh, the, seal, uh, the seal providers will still show uh, the security seal. And if we want to believe the studies of these seal providers, uh, the having a security seal on your website uh, leads to an increased credibility of your website. Uh, so the seal providers are claiming that having a security seal on an e-commerce website will lead to 5 to 20 percent uh, increase of uh, sales. Uh, so visually, so you have your uh, sealed website uh, with the seal referring to the site of the seal provider. Uh, so as an attacker, you clone the sealed website. Uh, but as you can see, the security seal isn't there. So basically, the attacker adds this meta tag in HTML, and poof, the security seal starts showing. And uh, the security seal also refers to the website of the trusted seal provider. So now when Alice comes along, uh, she is referred to this phishing page. And she's wondering whether she should actually trust this phishing page. And okay, she looks at it and she, she sees that there's this security seal present. Uh, so she can even click on it, uh, which will refer her to the website of the security seal provider. And this seal provider will say that well, actually this domain uh, is found to be without vulnerabilities. So Alice can basically just trust this uh, seal provider because probably she has heard of the name of the seal provider and she sees that, well, this is a trusted web page. So she will also trust this party. And well, she will enter her credentials and, again, earning the attacker some money. So, to conclude uh, this presentation, uh, so we first uh, discovered that uh, these security seals are often used on webshops, uh, which is interesting because webshops often handle these, uh, well, credit card credentials and other sensitive uh, things. So it's quite uh, valuable for attackers. So in the second part, I have shown that having a security seal present on your website doesn't mean that much. Uh, so the sealed websites do not put uh, additional effort in trying to protect their customers uh, by, using, uh, by using uh, security mechanisms. Also, uh, even websites with a security seal uh, contain, still contain vulnerabilities, uh, which is mainly caused uh, by the vulnerability scanners that are used by the seal providers that perform insufficiently. And in the last part of this presentation, I have shown uh, various attacks against uh, seal providers and the security seal ecosystem. Uh, so. I would say that having a seal on your website makes you a va valuable target for attackers. So, I
Questions? Thanks for the thanks for the great talk. Liked it. Um, two questions, more or less related. Uh, when you finished the pen tests on the websites that gave you permission, mm -hmm. did you report back there, uh, of course, the, the, the results? And what was their reaction? Was it they stopped uh, the contract with the, the, the web shop with the, the seal provider? Yeah. So. Uh, some of them were quite surprised that we managed to find vulnerabilities. Um, others weren't that surprised because they know this was mainly a uh, commercial product more than a security product. Uh, they, uh, I don't think they actually contacted the seal providers, but I just think that they cancelled uh, their subscription. And, of course, directly after they ask you what would you recommend for us to do do we need some other seal provider or what was your recommendation to them uh, well using a seal provider uh, is uh, well by design it's a flawed design actually so uh, just having this uh, thing saying that your website is secure or not uh, it's, it's some kind of side channel and well, it could be used as an oracle for attackers. So using a seal provider, I would advise against it. Uh, yeah, if you want to have this automated testing, you could still use these uh, security products that test your website for vulnerabilities, but without putting a seal there. So what were the three tools you used? Uh, so Econetics, uh, Burp, Suite, and HP Web Inspect. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, one of the scanners that you that you saw the traffic coming in. You said that was pretty basic. Did you look at any of the other traffic from the other seal providers to to try and guess? Well, what are they using? Are they using Burp? Are they using Econetics against them? Or was it something homegrown? Uh, I think most of them used homegrown uh, security tools. Uh, yeah. So one of the many flaws of uh, automated security scanners is that they uh, well, they don't interpret the JavaScript, so they're not actual browsers. Uh, so we, I think there was only one or two where an actual browser environment was used, uh, which was needed to discover, I think, one or two vulnerabilities. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the talk and your research. Uh, I have just one remark about the results. Uh, I would expect that a C, C provider, which I'm not a fan of, <laughs> uh, would find like uh, the same amount of vulnerabilities or the same vulnerabilities like uh, Burp uh, just ran like, okay, this is your domain, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so I think for for um, the visualization, your benchmark should be an automated scanner, not the vulnerabilities you put in there, because I think it's. Uh, quite an illusion, you have a C provider scanning each night, getting better results than, for example, Acunetics and Burp and all those tools which are meant to be market leaders, right? Uh, so it's just, well, you, you're claiming like you have 50% uh, results uh, using Acunetic and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So this, this might be a benchmark for, for C providers. Uh, well, it wasn't meant as a benchmark, it was just meant as a way of showing that, uh, well, the, the off-the-shelf tools perform at least as good as these uh, seal providers. And uh, oh yeah, so the reason for this is that uh, these off-the-shelf tools often uh, have false positives. Uh, and that's a big problem if you want to provide a security seal. Because if you find a false positive, then you expect them to fix it, but there's nothing to fix. So I think that's one of the reasons why they performed uh, not as good as the uh, security tools. Okay, Th thanks very much for this uh, enlightening talk. I'm afraid it won't seal the fate of the seal providers. <laughs> um, however, it is your time to give this guy a seal. And it's a seal of, hey, well done, or a seal of, you've wasted my time, or if you don't feel any like, like making any attestation, then simply walk out the door. Thank you for your attention.